Hey, thanks for coming to Story Theory. So today we're going to be taking a closer look at the Satisfactory Modeler. This is one of the three main tools I use to help with my Satisfactory production chains. You can download this program right now on Steam for absolutely free and I highly, highly suggest it. It has helped me organize my Satisfactory life. So let's take a closer look. So now that you've gone ahead and downloaded the Satisfactory Modeler, you're going to be brought into this page. This little book on the bottom left is going to be your summary tab. I'll go over that in a second and what it's good for. Up here on the right is going to be your settings. So you can import and export your different production planners. Your settings here are the different theme for Satisfactory Modeler. Mine's on dark mode at the moment. And then your machine defaults, which I'll get into in a minute as well. So holding left click will get you the pan function. Uh, middle mouse button, of course, is going to be zoom and right click gets you to the main menu. I like to set up a different outpost for each one of my builds. So why don't we do that? Click on the outpost and we're actually just going to title this test and go ahead and open that. It's going to bring you to a brand new page. Now, if we right click to get to the main menu again, I want to do computers for this demo build. So up in the search function, you can type in computer. It's going to give you the default recipe first. The alternative recipes are going to be highlighted in blue. And then everything that a computer is used in is going to be at the bottom here. So let's just go with the default recipe. Now, if we zoom in a little bit, we're going to have our outputs on the right, our inputs on the left. If we right click on the part limit, let's say we want to make 10 of these. The machine limit here is down on the number four. So you need four manufacturers and then all of the inputs that you would need. If you right click on this, you can change the clock speed. So that's going to be your red pie chart here and change how many sloops you're going to use, which will be the purple pie chart. And then you can also title and do copy and paste. Now I want to make as few machines as possible because my computer just cannot handle those mega builds that Kibitz makes. So I want to put in here a clock speed of 200%. You'll notice that it actually changes the part limit and not the machine limit. This is why I like to start at the end of a production chain. I just find it to be a little bit easier. So go ahead and right click on that again, change that back to 10, and now we're back to two manufacturers. So let's zoom out a little bit, click and drag this with the left mouse button over to the right here, and now click and drag on each one of those inputs to get what the recipes are for circuit boards. So we're just gonna use the default circuit board recipe here. It's going to take 5.33 assemblers to make those 40 circuit boards. I hate using um, non whole number or underclocking machines. So we're actually going to change that. It's going to be if we start out at 250%, we know that we can only get 2.13 assemblers to make those 40 circuit boards. I kind of like these to be a whole number. So let's go ahead and change that. It's going to need to be uh, three. So three is what we're looking for here. 200%, we're getting a little bit closer, 175, a little closer, 177.5% is what we're gonna be using. So let's go ahead and title this as well because that little pie chart, a little hard to read for me on exactly what the um, overclocking limit is for each one of these. I like to be able to look at these at a glance. Let's go ahead and title this one as well, just for continuity sake, 200%, boom. All right, let's do cable. Cable, we're gonna use the standard default recipe here. And we are going to clock that up to 133%, uh, percent, which is gonna give us our whole number of two constructors. And you can see I've done this before because kind of know all these wacky percentages based on the recipes. Now for plastic, we are gonna use the default recipe. However, we need plastic for the circuit boards as well. So you can click on this plastic, drag that out and just drop it there. And now the program knows, hey, we need way more crude oil. Now you could drag this out and make it its own, um, its own crude oil uh, kind of node here, but I just find this to be a little bit easier. So instead of needing 260 manufacturer refineries here, we are going to need seven. What does that come out to? Uh, let's see, 220. 225, 230, 228.5. There we go. Perfect. Plastic at 228.5%. So that's where you know, hey, we're going to be making plastic here. It needs to split the circuit boards and split to the final computer assembly. So copper sheets, we're going to be using the standard default recipe. Let's just go ahead and cut that in half. So this is going to be copper sheets at 200%. Do the same thing for wire here. 
and this is going to be 133.5 percent so it's going to be wire at 133.5 percent and that's going to give us four constructors now you can play with these a little bit to make them look a little nicer i don't really like the flow leaders overlapping too much um but let's go ahead and continue with the copper sheets we're going to need copper ingots now since we need copper ingots here we're just going to once again click and drag that up we're going to go ahead and cut this in half this is going to be copper ingots at 200 percent there we go now let's get into our raw resources here so pull this over we're going to be making crude oil this is where you're going to want to change this to parts per minute and instead of it being four here that's where it's going to show you hey 480 so you can actually change this up here in the settings if you go over here go to settings machine defaults oil extractor you can put on here impure normal pure what the limit is for each one i just have the default as a normal just because i will go in here and change these myself it seems to be a little bit easier instead of changing the defaults i would rather change it per production line instead so we need 480 crude oil for copper we're going to do the same thing this is actually a mark one miner now so sorry about that so as a mark one miner um you can get 60 um 60 copper ore per minute out of a normal node which is what my default is set to so i'm actually going to change this into parts per minute again just so i know hey i need 240 copper out of here and i need 480 crude oil now what do we do about this the heavy oil residue is a byproduct of making plastic with a default recipe you have to get rid of this if you don't it's going to clog up the entire process so what can we make out of this if you just want to get rid of it i suggest going residual fuel it's a super easy conversion you can go ahead and come in here i believe that's going to be like what 233 or let's see 250 so we actually need two of these so 133 percent so that's going to just be making standard fuel 106.67 go ahead and grab that put that into a fuel generator so it burns right off and then let's see uh we would need three of these i think it's 109 let's see actually 200 or 150 177.5 again yep there it is all right fuel gens at 177.5 percent so now you're taking that heavy oil residue, turning it into fuel, and just burning it off. The thing about this build is it could be 100% self-sustaining. How do you know that? This is where the summary tab is going to come in. So I'm going to turn off my webcam and my overlay. Go ahead and click on your summary tab. This is going to give you this power summary. So right now, we're actually minus 168.3 power. You could probably get around that by not power sharding all of these and just using the standard amount of machines it would cost. However, there is a way to make this a self-sustaining build. Instead of using the standard fuel recipe, you go ahead and make that diluted fuel. Now you're making a ton of extra fuel. So, you, of course you need to put water in there. So go ahead and grab a water extractor. We would need 320 water to put in there. But now you can see we have a surplus of power. So this could be a completely self-sustaining build if you wanted it. On the summary tab here, you have a bunch of other great tabs. Overclocking, so we'll be using 78 power shards for this entire build. Our output is going to be 10 computers and our input so if you turn on this little miner here it's going to tell you copper ore 240 crude oil 480 water 320. of course you can see that all here because this is a pretty simple build but if we go into my plutonium fuel rod build which as you can tell is ginormous it tells me all the different things i need to make this plutonium fuel rod build which is actually the max of the map i'm using all the uranium on the map map to make uranium fuel rods, turning those into plutonium, and I'm going to be using those in my drones. So this is an absolutely fantastic tool. There's a couple other things in here that I didn't go over, so I'll kind of show those now. There was a recent update which added storage containers and dimensional depots, which are huge. The splurger is a splitter and a merger. Priority splitter, priority merger, priority splitter is splurger, sorry, is pretty much what I use. 
So on this, the top is always gonna be the priority, so input and output, and the bottom is not. So just to show this real quick, um, let's say we're just doing iron ore, those are gonna be going into ingots, and I want 100 ingots. But let's say I'm putting this on a really good node, and I have, uh, I have 500 ore coming out of here. So we only need 100 here, and that's only going to be putting 100. What do we do with that extra ore that we have? You could throw this into an awesome sink, and then it's gonna be telling you, hey, 100 goes up here and 400 goes down here, but this is the priority. This top one is going to be the priority. So, or you could say, hey, I'm putting this in a storage unit for some unknown reason, and you got 400 ore in here. Um, so that's kind of how you use the priority function on these builds. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Once again, the Satisfactory Modeler is one of the three main programs that I use to help make my Satisfactory life so much easier. I use this for all of my production chains, all of my dimensional depot builds. So you can tell how many of these outposts and what I'm making here. Uh, the little asterisk means that's done. Um, the little question mark means that I'm still not sure, you know, hey, have I actually finished this build or not? So if you enjoyed the video, please let me know if you want me to review the Satisfactory Calculator, Satisfactory Tools website. I can definitely do that. And thank you for coming. I hope to see you on the next one. Bye.